Hello there, friends. Welcome to my new channel. Well, it's not really a new channel. <laughs> it's a channel that I started, oh, well, this, well, actually, it's been two years. It was in March of 2018. And, uh, of course, I wanted to read God's Word to encourage my fellow believers in Christ and to reach out to those who need salvation, who want to learn more about who this Jesus is what this Bible is about. And about two months in, I started another channel because I wanted to focus a little bit more on the ASMR side. And, um, really loved that channel. I still do. Still do. Then, June of last year, of 2019, my mother went to be with the Lord Jesus. And The Lord started really speaking to my heart at that point. I mean, about this channel, about my other channel and this channel. And He pressed it on my heart in a very real, palpable way. That He wanted me to make a shift from primarily ASMR type of Bible reading. And what I mean by that is the tapping and, and so forth. He wanted me to shift from that to focusing on His Word. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the tapping and all that. There isn't. In fact, I will occasionally go back to that channel and make some more videos. But he wants me to focus on his word. And yes, it is in the ASMR style in that I speak softly. Which is my normal voice. I mean, not this soft, but close to it. I am a... When I'm normally talking, I have a soft voice. He wants his word to be listened to. And the other channel with the, with the tapping and so forth, it's more prone to drive you to fall asleep. And yes, yes, maybe my videos here will make you fall asleep. And that's okay. There's nothing against that. But to make it the primary goal to help someone to sleep, the Lord wants me to shift from. And to make it a goal to try to keep your attention on His Word. I mean, that is really important. He's most important. Occasionally in my videos, you might hear in the background some rain, some wind. That's okay. I will still have that. 
But if you're st still interested in the tapping videos, or if you've never been to that channel before and you'd like to check it out, the channel is called Moonlit Bible ASMR and there's a link in the description. But I encourage you to stay with me here as well. Subscribe to both. Anyway, for my introduction video, my welcome back to this channel video, I thought that I would share some verses with you from God's Word. That means so much to me. That have helped me in so many ways. My son and I have made it a goal since almost four years ago to memorize scripture, memorize verses, with the primary purpose of being ready at all times for trials that might come, for difficulties, for challenges, that those verses would be ready. And sometimes when those verses would come to mind, I may not know them like like that, but I would know them enough that it would cause me to turn to the Lord, to focus upon Him and His promises, and that I would know where to find them in the Word, so that I would go to that verse in the Word, and if I don't have it completely memorized, at least I know where to go, where to find it, and I read it. Oh, what a difference it makes to hide the Word of God in your heart. I cannot stress that enough. So, got my tablet over here and I'll turn it on. And um, the first one I'm going to go to is in Philippians chapter 4. Oops, wrong way. I always do that. Always end up going the wrong way. And it begins in verse 6. And the verses I will read is verses 6 and 7. And no doubt, if you've been a Christian long enough, you're quite familiar with these verses. Be careful for, excuse me, <laughs> be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. There's the hymn. Oh, let me think. The title of it is um, Sweet Hour of Prayer, I believe is the title of it. 
sweet hour of prayer. Yeah, I think that's it. And um, I can't think of all the words in the hymn right now, but it, the essence of it is that we know how precious it is to be in prayer to the Lord. We know what it's like to be in His presence. And we know the joy of lifting up our needs and our concerns and our trials and whatever it is that we're facing up to the Lord. We know it at the time that we do it. So why do we not do it consistently? Well, there's many reasons for it. But the main reason is that it goes against our flesh, doesn't it? Our flesh would rather not pray. It doesn't want to take the time. Or it has too much going on. Too much on that schedule to do. Too much... much distractions, such as our phones. And if you're like me, oh my goodness, I get into the terrible habit. The first thing I do when I wake up, I turn on my phone and check out what's in the news. Oh, and how many times I have said to the Lord, oh, Lord, forgive me. Help me to go to you first. And you know, I'm so glad when I do, when I choose him first. And there's two reasons for that. Number one, it's important that we have that fellowship with the Lord. It is essential that we maintain that fellowship. He's always faithful. He will always be there. He will never leave us or forsake us. So he's always got the door open of fellowship with us. But we need a fellowship with him. He is our source of everything. Which leads me to number two. We need Him. We cannot face this life without Him. Life is too hard. Life is just too hard. We need Him. Now, first of all, you must be a child of God in order to have that fellowship with Him. We need to be His child through salvation in Jesus Christ. Okay? By accepting the free gift of salvation, by coming to Him, realizing that we are sinners and that we need His forgiveness. And that we believe what he did on the cross for us. The son of the living God who knew no sin. Taking our sins upon himself. And bearing the judgment of our sins upon himself. And then on the third day rising from the dead. That's how we become his child. So that is number one. But once we're his child, we have the benefits of all the promises in God's word. Every promise is ours. Yes, there are some in the Old Testament that are primarily for Israel. 
but there's also promises that are for Israel and us today. But all the promises are ours. And when the Bible says, such as in this verse, to be careful for nothing, but in everything we are to come to God in prayer. What does be careful for nothing mean? Don't allow anxiety and the cares of life to weigh you down when you know the source of all strength. You know the source of all grace and peace and quiet. You know the source of the one who will give you victory over sin, victory over trials. So this verse is saying, Come to God in prayer. Don't bear all of that weight. Let him bear it for you. And what happens when we give it to him? Oh, and I neglected to mention. Also, when we are praying to the Lord, and presenting our concerns, our worries, and so forth to Him. We are to be thankful. Even if you don't feel like it at the time. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him that He is there. Thank Him that He is ready. Thank him that he has promised to never leave you nor forsake you. Thank him that he is your best friend, your closest friend. Then, once we have prayed and we've thanked him, we've given all of these things to him, Something will happen in verse 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Oh. Let me tell you, there is nothing that can be compared to the peace of God. Nothing. I'm going to turn to Isaiah 26 chapter, or Isaiah 26 verse 3. to this. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. That is saying that as we keep our minds upon the Lord, we keep our focus upon Him. We continually 
through the reading of his word, getting to know him as we read his word. We continually remind ourselves of who God is. And we take our focus off of what's going on around here, out here. Right now, at the making of this video, we are going through a terrible crisis in this world. It's called the coronavirus. And it has affected us in so many ways, not just in people getting sick and some people dying, but it's affecting our economy. A lot of people are out of work. It's affecting our lifestyles, especially for those of you who are go-getters. You know, you like to go places to get together with other people. It's affecting how we attend church. The last couple of Sundays I've had to watch church via live stream as well as the rest of the congregation. And the future is unknown. But if we allow, as Christians, our thoughts to be consumed with when is this going to end? Or what am I going to do? Especially if you're out of work. Or you're getting stir crazy at home. Or life just seems right now to have been turned completely upside down. If you focus on that, or on anything that pulls you down, that causes the weight of life to burden you, and puts you in an emotional state or mental state that you just plain don't like, then you've taken your eye. Up at the Lord. Because the Lord, when He makes a promise, He keeps it. And He said, He says here that He will keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds on Him. And how do we keep our minds on Him? How I keep my mind on Him is through the reading of God's Word, through prayer, and through memorizing verses with my son. All oh, those verses have made a difference in our lives. Now am I saying that I'm perfect? <laughs> oh, Please, if that's all you get out of this, that, oh, she's arrived, oh my goodness, then I have failed. Because if I say that I've arrived at that point, then that means, one, I'm either lying, or two, I'm in denial. Because you see, we're human. And while the objective is to keep our minds on Him at all times, yes, that's the goal. Oftentimes, I fail in that area. I have to tell you, I've had my fair share of saying to my husband or my son or my daughter when she comes to visit, or whomever is listening, 
When is this coronavirus thing gonna end? Or I allow a mood I wake up in to dictate the rest of my day. Or I do the very thing that I mentioned at the beginning. Wake up in the morning and go right to my phone, check the news, scrolling. And in, it, it's funny. I'll say to myself, oh, I'm just going to check this real quick. I won't read it. I just want to see what the headlines are. And then I'll get right into God's Word, right? Do I? Hmm. No. Because you see, the thing is, the people who write those articles know how to get you. <laughs> they make very interesting titles. So you're like, oh my goodness. Boom. Open it up. And then you read it. And that's one thing after another. And then, before I know it, it's time to get up and start my day. And I know, I know very well what I've done. And you see, I might at that moment be, be living off the fumes of the day before when I really was exercising keeping my mind on the Lord and I think that those fumes left over from yesterday will do just fine for today maybe I'm on that spiritual high oh but that will only last for so long and pretty soon I, and it doesn't happen right away but after a while, I begin to notice that my emotions are starting to dictate the way I think or see life or whatever. And pretty soon, I allow my flesh, the world, and the devil to run things. But it's very subtle, isn't it? Very subtle. <laughs> this is the this is the funniest thing about me. Sometimes when I when I go through several days, you know, of that bad habit of looking at my phone rather than spending time with the Lord and then going on with my day. And yes, every now and then I might say a prayer here and there, but they're they're quick little prayers, you know. After a while I allow all that to happen. Then I get to a point where things are just, ugh. And I've gotten mad at people, I've gotten mad at my family, I've short-tempered. And then I'll get into bed that night, and I'll drop my head down to my hands. You know, when, when, you, when you're frustrated, your, your fingers go into your hair. <laughs> and you squeeze your hair or you pull your hair and then I say to the Lord what's wrong with me? what's wrong with me Lord? why am I acting like this? as if I did not know <laughs> and then I'm reminded seek you first. I didn't walk with you, Lord. And so I come back. And I get right back into his word. Aren't you glad that God allows us to kind of fall apart? It's not fun at the time, but it brings us I have to admit, I'm glad that he does that.
And that's what trials are meant for. Trials are meant to drive us to Him. I'll, I'm going to close with something funny that happened. The other day we had an earthquake. Well, not us. We're about 300 miles away from the epicenter of the earthquake. But the earthquake was shallow enough that it traveled far. And I was sitting in my recliner and I was looking at my phone. Which, by the way, I'm not saying don't do that. I'm just saying set your priorities. Put the Lord first. But anyway, so I was looking at the phone and of a sudden I I noticed that the recliner kind of well I felt like somebody came behind me and went just gently in the back and it was weird but then it started swaying ever so gently and then it went again a little jerk and sway I'm from Southern California so I know what an earthquake feels like, even the really tiny, small ones. And I jumped up. And I said, <laughs> I yelled at the top of my voice, everybody find a door frame now. <laughs> because you see, having been, having lived in Southern California, I lived through a major earthquake back in um, 1970 or 71. I can't remember which year it was, but it was like a seven pointer and it started off that way, very subtle and then boom, boom you know, and it shook, shook, shook. It was pretty violent. So anyways, I was yelling find a door frame, everybody, run. And of course, my husband runs downstairs, my son runs up from upstairs, and they're going, what? I said, earthquake. And they said, what? <laughs> and then I watched uh, some videos of those who posted, you know, videos that were closer to the epicenter. And they were so calm. There was a little bit of excitement, but they were calm. <laughs> and I thought, oh my Lord Jesus, look at me. To react like that over a simple little rocking, that's ridiculous. But I did read somewhere, in my defense, that those from Southern California who've lived through some major earthquakes tend to overreact. Like they had an earthquake in Seattle one time and I mean it, it, it was a moderate, very low to moderate earthquake. And the regular people were like, oh wow, that was an earthquake. Where those from Southern California were the ones that panicked because we know they start off like that and then get on hand. Okay, I gotta go. I'm almost out of um, space on my phone. I don't know why I shared that with you. I guess my point is when using that example, when we're not in God's Word, life when life circumstances come, we're not prepared. And we react, we become reactive to life. And we become burdened rather than focusing on Him. So I guess that's why I shared that example. 
and we're in his word and life throws you a curveball you'll be ready am I saying you won't get emotional at first? of course not, look at how I reacted with the earthquake but you know what I did? I remembered a verse that I had memorized and while I was still a little <laughs> I gave it to the Lord and he gave me peace okay that's it for my first video on this channel my first in well it is my first because my other videos have been deleted so my first video welcome I hope that you'll subscribe because more is coming very soon very very soon God bless you.